is a virgin version of software the unitary controllers these are like v a v controllers maybe a controller with a couple inputs and outputs for miscellaneous equipment the v l x visual logic controller this is is like the most powerful one it does transfers from so if you have this unitary controller down in the basement you can retrieve its data with this one and then transfer it to another controller in the building these controllers the unitary controllers don't you can't transfer logic there whatever's in them is in them but with the v l x and the global controllers you can do that you'll see these controllers on chiller plants boiler rooms yeah so these are pretty much the best ones they have expansion modules that you can put up to seven for inputs and outputs and they do everything you can think of these global controllers are more of the host they'll the mstp will run out of these and they'll they'll connect over to the unitary controllers the building controller also has that same functionality they can also host other controllers you can have up to seven of these things jammed jammed together power supply bcm ethernet your your ethernet module hang on a second we're going to try something different here this thing's twigging out does everybody know what a field controller is should know that'd be like the unitary ones or ones on the unit yeah field controllers field controllers so like this is a vav controller this is a stand standalone there's no logic that gets programmed into this the dip switches tell you what it is and then the last dip switches make up the mac address that can be used like vavs and heat pumps or you guys want to see this right here uh what was that that that's not just for vavs you'd use that one for like heat pumps and stuff or that be the this would be for this is an old this is the ibex version cooling only parallel fan series reheat or series fan reheat Stage one, stage two, so this would just be like a heat. Okay. Maybe a, a valve if you wanted to. Yeah, you could do a valve. Uh, I just had one controlling an, an Aon unit. What's that? There's probably oh. not that one. What? He was saying you had one of these controlling an Aon unit, but not. No, that. it's possible. You, it's you, you probably see some crazy stuff out there. Oh, so just, that just works. Yeah, because we have our own controls here. Good, man. We got that now. So yeah, field controller. So did that explain it? So field controller. So you got inputs. <coughs> uh, inputs are always on the left. Outputs are always on the right. You've got binary power. Uh, a key with the the back talk 3.0, to 3.1. Uh, the blinks, the the green blinks on the controller. If it blinks once, it's like once it's not communicating. If it blinks twice, then it's it can see the server or the global controller, which is this guy, the host. So the MSTP goes from this to these guys. If it blinks twice, it can see it. And if it blinks three times, it's online, scanned in and communicating. So that's a really easy thing so to tell if the controller's working. Normal operation, anytime we come up to it, we should see the three blinks then? On a backtalk version controller. This old, if you have Ibex, they just blink real fast, or they don't. They're like real slow would mean it's not blink communicating. And then even the older versions have red lights, but don't there the green light and the red light don't mean a difference. They just that's the way they made them that that year. Or that, that. Um, any questions about these controllers? Yeah, the basics of them, just so you know. Do the outputs have proportional? Hang on, Doug. So, like, I know because I know Dave, Dave's new to this. So, in controls world, there's the unit. There's, a, you know, you got your heat pump sitting here. And normally you have a thermostat attached to the thing. Thermostat controls the unit. Well, that's what basically this is doing. This is taking the place of the thermostat. That's the brain. And it's 100% programmable, so... So, I can make it do whatever you, I want. So generally with these, there's one of these per unit. And the job of this is to, is to think. So it's given a program. 
to feel so it has sensors so air temperature water pressure water temperature outside air temperature time of day that's a feel and then to act so it thinks it feels and it acts and acting is taking the inputs and its thought its program <coughs> giving an output so it looks at my room temperature is this I was told to be this I'm going to do this basically that simple we're all supposed to be 70 it's 68 I'm going to turn the heating on that's what this does that's what that's what a field controller does now that that's simplified it looks at feedback it looks at the I asked for heat to come on the room temp has come up so there's a there's a positive to that and it knows how much heat rises there's been in that amount of time and it can calculate based on what what it action was what the feedback was so that's a full feedback loop is what that is so that's what Mike's talking about here these field controllers these are generally the most expensive part of the control system because they're on every system, every unit, they're everything out there. But basically, really, when you when you take a call on a piece of equipment, this is what you see. This is the first thing you see. It might be the only thing you see. Yeah, Does that one have lights indicating the output? Is there yeah. something to turn off lights on? Oh, this one it looks like it does. This one has yeah, has lights for outputs. Is that what these are? Yeah, so they'll they'll go green and they're triax. Uh, Twenty four volts should come out of it, no problem. Um, I've seen them do all kinds of different things. I've seen them all just go like Christmas tree effect and just cycle them all on and off because it was a faulty controller. Oh. Um, Right here, the airflow tubes on the unitary controllers. It doesn't matter which way you put the tube. Um, and it's got a hot wire anemometer, so it's real easy for dust to get to get in there. We used to actually pop this off and clean it with like your eyelash, pretty much. <laughs> uh, the dip switches are right here. This the, this is the MAC the MAC address. So it goes from zero to one twenty seven, and they're binary. So two four eight sixteen thirty two. Um, the Buchanan's come off very easily, unlike the Honeywell controller. Um, what else is there? Yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know about the unitary controller. The status lights, the three blinks is key. And then over here on the VLX, if, yeah, that works now. Um, CPU, this is, uh, if you're in like a chiller plant, you usually see these. Um, CPU, this should be a green light. I don't even know what that says. System, that should be blinking. Rock file should be blinking, and then the DDC should be blinking. So it kind of, just by looking at the controller, you can see if it's functioning. Um, Check something. You know, work explain what those things are real quick. Let me uh, check something here, because I got, I got here. I got that working, but we're still having, <clears throat> we're having few technical difficulties here. It's like stuck on there. What's that? That's the old, it, you're, the old Skype content. It's stuck on there. <clears throat> Do what you want, but I can just do it with this. I don't need to. Um, these covers on the VLX they fold open, <coughs> and then there's Ethernet hookup with transmit receive lights. And on all the EXP modules, let's see if I can just find one real quick. These are the expan expansion modules. Um, so, 22 inputs. The number, the numbers always. What was that? Oh, it just came up. Oh, no. Man, it's back. Let's go. I gotta not touch. So the, the number, these numbers represent the, you know, the number of inputs, outputs, and analog outputs. In this case, it's 22 inputs. So there's going to be 22 inputs on each side. They're they're configurable. The inputs. Uh, there's these. When you flip those covers open, there's these little jumpers, and they come off. And if you read this diagram, they'll let, they'll let you configure it for what you want. So like 0 to 10, 0 to 5, or a thermistor, and then you would just place that where you 
Those are on the inputs there? Yeah, on the inputs of most all Allerton cards except for the VADs. Um, and then on the global controller, this guy, uh, it's like a videotape. You know, you can direct connect here. It's got a ribbon cable that plugs so when you want to add more, you know, they all plug together. You can add as much as you want. Uh, the lights are key. They got transmit, receive. I mean, if you're only getting like a transmit and you're not going to receive, obviously nothing's communicating. Um, and then system rock, DDC, and your battery. So just by looking at the controller, you can diagnose the problem pretty quick. Um, let's go to this slide. It just doesn't work. No, it's like jumping between stuff. Hello, question. Uh, this is an Apex. Uh, this is your older Ibex Allerton stuff. This is the same thing as this BCM, but just the older version. Um, these lights over here on the left represent the, the trunk status, so your communication to your VAVs in the field. Um, let's see if I can blow that up. It's not the best picture. Oh, you can't even see it. It just went away. It just went away. <laughs> so these four <laughs> pots are trim pots, and they represent the trunk um, for the voltage, so 0 to 18 volts for IBEX. And you can take your meter and put it on one of the spades and then the, the trunk, you can verify your voltage. It should be like seven volts for IBEX, it goes up to 18, but that's how you troubleshoot the trunk. Um, we can go into depth on that later too. Um, you usually have a battery up here and you'll find these are the brain of the, the whole system. They do all the transfers, they receive all the building. <laughs> Uh, tech, tech key to USB. This would be a good use back in the day. And then there are controllers, APLC, users, 259 bucks a pop. Inputs and outputs. They have a little red light. IBEX is doing it quick. It doesn't do anything with this. It's not. It's just going to be too slow. Uh, and then your MAC address. And then you've got your configuration inputs. Completely programmable. Those are just some of the things you guys will see in the field. And then there's the, uh, the gauge thing. Is that going to work? No. I don't know. What did you try to do? Oh, there it goes. Let me go back to that. Uh, gateways. So you've got a trunk in and a trunk out. So this basically takes back net data and turns it into Modbus data or long or whatever you get. It's a change to the length of the protocol. So you'll see those out there uh, a lot. They, they just have a program string, basically like a Word document, maybe throw in there to make it do that. Um, so that's how you get your Uber units. All your third party stuff that doesn't speak back in their long. What was that called? Uh, just, yeah, a just a gateway. I mean, there's, I mean, there's tons, tons of different, different gateways out there. This, this is just one version of gateways. This is the video that's there. Uh, this, uh, this is the uh, Ibex front end. end. It's real old. It's not so good. 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 It's not there we go. So, we the best picture, but as you can see, it says, you know, all the hours went to pretty much different. It stays the same, like on the format for the menu bar. 
Um, so, so if you want to this skill requirement, like the last one is harder it is. is. Well, if you look, look up here, I don't like that site, which you say they come, which would be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Trump won. Trump won right here. here. And it's going down and communicating to address the issue. That's not the best picture of this is. So then we know that that card, everything on this screen is just, you know, so that's that. And then here's the backdrop, kind of the same, except the device instance of the car and the MAC address is right in there. It's device 22051. So now they have 2200 or 220 in the MAC address is 51. Another thing I showed you up here is this NR. That means no response. You'll also see some NX. It means not communicating. And if you see an A, you just not an A. So that's what I'm going to do. Thank you, guys. Here is a web talk version. It's a web browser based. It really came to market for all the You might not see it that much. But it's, it's web based and it loads really well. And you kind of want to make them. Somebody's asking about a water flow GPM reference input for VFD pumps. That's Doug. <clears throat> he wants to know, um, ask about, he says, ask about water flow reference input for VFD pumps. So I think what he's, I think what he's looking for is output. I don't know, what, what do you want to do? He wants a differential pressure sensor for pumps. I'll ask him. And then here's compass. That's why I quit it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as good. I don't know, it's all right. But, but a lot, lot of stuff involved. involved. We'll talk in the East. We'll in our allergy vendor. But yeah, yeah it's, it's got, got the look to it. You can hover over it. Everything that is over here. I, won't, I, don't, I don't have, have the software, software so I won't be showing you guys this today. Um, but but everything's all set based. And it takes a lot more work to set up. That's for sure. But it is it's nice, nice. It, 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 you do a try that. that. Um, device, device instance. Everything's used to write up the screen. You double, you double click, click any point. You can't click, click these ones. It will show you. It will hover over. It will show you the device instance. Uh -huh. It's all with control. It's all about the process. You're trying to look for something. So, so you, you always start with the graphic. graphic and you hover over and you say, OK, this is the device. This is the point I'm looking for. And then, then you can you know, more hard control for shooting. Um, so that's, that's just kind of a basic basis of, of the different, different systems. Uh, you guys have any questions before we dive into the actual program? Stuff. Is there a reason you can't jump these out? 20 more volts to eat, 20 I think you will. I think so. Well, if you get 24 off the car, you can get that 24 wired in. I don't think you can do it all. 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 But the allergy might be where you can drive right into the output. So why is it still blinking? It's a, uh, it's, I don't know. I don't know. So here's Washington Square. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with the basics. Uh, basics. Uh, you get a little alarm, you can pop up. up. Most, Most people just go over and hide it. Yeah. We'll start with the, the menu. menu. First, we're going to find out what we're going to do. So we're going to do a 2.0 version. version. It's allowed up to 150 devices in three different workstations. It's all based on that key that they purchase. So, so the tech key. I have, I have one here. We wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't have a software laptop. 
So that talks to consider everything that you're really looking for, for logging on that device manager. This, this is, is uh, everything. everything. This is where you pull your devices in and you can check them out. Um, if you do a scan, I'm going to scan my licenses. Scanning everything out the field, telling you where it's at, or if it's online. If it's not online, it should show up in here. It should say NR on the graphic, there's no response. Um, MAC address, these are what you do on the car, like the big switch. So, and then the, uh, the network, that's just a rule that's not on the car. <laughs> That it is kind of a slow program. Um, so all the devices, you can double click on these devices. I just added this up there. there. You know, give it a name, give it all these preferences. Uh, so everything you can kind of on. Sometimes I can tell you the device location because it can be a pain in the butt to find it those sometimes. In this case, they don't sound good. Um, that's, that's the device manager. manager. This is where you also, also, if you have to replace a card, card, you'll have to do it here also. also There's two ways to do it. it. Um, basically, basically, you'll, you'll scan, scan any new allergy card. card. Before, Before you put it in the field, field, the device instance is 99999. If you scan for that, it will show up in red, red, and it will have, have a Mac address, address that you put on. Say it was Mac address will be the license 9999 back address. Okay. So then, then you've got your card, and then it's just a matter of um, giving it the same, same license. So you would select it here, there. and then when you, you scan for it, it, you'll be able to save it to the table. table. <laughs> and you'll be able to replace that one. There's also There's another, another, another other more redundant way, way to do it. But that's, that's where you add devices. It takes your other one line. Be careful that you don't hit send. send. This is where you would do like, like your file. 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 Shut, shut, shut the controller down. down. Uh, you need to shut, shut the controller down. down. Um, you need to shut the controller down. You need to shut the controller down. And these have, have the global tab. Schedule to send an alarm. So. They don't get the same data. data. And then, and then so, so we can, if it's, uh, I guess we can say, say it's for fun. Uh, uh, there's a 550, so it's got five, five inputs, inputs five, five, five binary outputs, and zero analog outputs. Um, if we wanted, wanted to save data, data, we'll say this is, we're going to send, we would you know, save the DDC, save the point of data, uncheck this, because they need to, and then. Save. So now you're saving the data from the device code and everything that makes it work. Now you don't know if it actually saved unless you go to view, user request monitor. There you go, you can actually see it. Processing the ID and saving the actual all the points and then the DDC. So that would be the same thing if you sent code to like a hardware device. You would go to the end, and then you come into your request monitor and queue, and you can verify that that stuff got sent. Usually, the code that doesn't need to be sent is broken. It's not happening there. A lot of people say, oh, this is trouble. It's not going to have any other zones. This is going to be fun. So each code is like one of these. So, these. so you can select, select you know, West West Tower, Tower, and maybe they didn't know this way. Can you show, like, like scheduling? Yeah, yeah the, the zone sort of schedules. schedules. So, the local is just so I can make So, the global controller is more like a special controller. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Every one of those cards goes back to the global. Yeah. yeah. So, you have the global controller, and now it is the global will actually go out and say how many units are heating, how many units are cooling, and the global will tell the air handler to start, the chiller plant to start. So the global is just like the mediator in the middle. So they don't have some set here, but the schedules, schedules are list. They got the lack of schedule points. This isn't a good example. 
They don't have much if they're all extended zones. The just have a So you could right click go to a region. You got your, your zones up here, your zones and schedule is kind of going the same ballpark. Do you remember? Um, so if you got a key zone and you want to figure out the schedule, usually you right click this, go to the zones. In this case, it doesn't have one, so I can add it. So make a zone. And I mean, it's just an example. So now I can add a schedule to it, and I want to make it in the schedule. You can make the share schedules, you can make a copy of the business schedule, and this schedule resides in this DCM. So when I finish that now, you're going to run here, which is just Hit the left button, drag it down, right click it in. Double click. This is a reoccurring day. This is Monday to Friday. And then when I right click this occupied point, which is BB67, um, you know, trade it this. No more. BB67 is attached to the zone. You can go in and see how that's attached. So if you want to. Um, I think that's that. Did that? 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 So say that again, start at the top of that, that list. So the, the, the allergy of the beginning of the controllers, you know, DLCs. So when you're going to dive into the controller and look at the output, you want to verify, you want to make it right. This is even more templates for the controller. So if you just look at this and then you pick your corresponding one. So this is the DLC. Like so I like DLC. I've got to input the outputs. The micro set that, that actually has the in it, it and communicates to Carver. And then and analog values, values and binary values, 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 which are all, when you see the V, it means they're virtually all inside of the network, network in the intuition. Um, so if you, you click the input and outputs, now you can see exactly what it's doing. Um, I can I fire the band for right here on the priority array. I don't know if you can get the priority arrays, but these tabs tell you if it needs the code in the DDC is doing the job or the code in the global controller is doing the job. Because I've seen jobs where you've got a controller with the programs in here, and then it's writing to the inputs and outputs. So it's, it's a good, it's a good habit of where we're here. Uh, the commands are coming from. So, so I know that this one's in the, in the code, so it's, it's writing in 14. 14. So if I try, I try to change that to null, 
should go back to the active because it's, it's a BGC right so you're not on offside. Uh, it was global with the other year, and then usually we don't drive as well as any of the manual operators. So if you're trying to troubleshoot or a cycle movement, you would do it right here, the manual operator, or you could drive like you just click the button and then hit it right there. Right now we'll start with the new unit. Um, Input, you can't override inputs, only the outputs. Same thing with the analog values. Either you can just uh, the manual operator, zero to one one for your value. Now that zero to one hundred should send out your zero to ten volt signal, zero to five, but it can do whatever. It's um, yeah, that was the if you like that. Yeah, or yeah, I've forgotten. There's a tool you can go to. We'll go and get into that. Override. Override. So, I said this is just a pretty basic tool because it doesn't have like four and the DAD But here's the schedule. You double click it, you can schedule tab. Down here, you can uh, find the you can look at the for. Also, with this, this is a schedule points. These are more like, okay, I need, a, I need that, that fan in the basement start. But I don't want to, it's not a, it's not a DAD, it doesn't need to set up the zone. So, so I'm going, I'm going to, to add, add point point schedule. Schedule. I want EB9 to start with the unit. So that would be the point. Um, another, another cool feature, feature. Uh, <coughs> it also tells you the DCC file that is running, running to just on this main display. display. So, so if you're looking, looking at the unit, unit any, this is the device instance. But if you click on any of the points, you can left click the hole, which will give you this window, or you can right click, you can go into the device. Um, there's also so, alarm, too. too. You can alarm, alarm anything you want if it's on the screen. screen. You right click, click the alarm, and you can set up new alarm with your, you can select the VCM that you want, 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 want it to, to be stored at. at. Usually, if this is cooler, it's on this PCM control, you want to go to the to port in this PCM. You don't want to, like, say that control over there. Which you'll see a lot of that. How do you identify which BCM? That, 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 that network number? Yeah, yeah. So you go to the device number, manager, and then the PCM manager. You can just click it. You can say, this is the shooting network. This is the one on one 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 So, at least that type of stuff. So, I don't know. Then drop the 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 Binary on off. We're going to have a lot of alarm. You give your alarm description. Say, say, you enable alarm. You select the handler. It's usually uh, what you want it to go to. So, this, this handler, the handler is a list of recipients, essentially. So, you add them here, and then you can remove them, you can add a phone number, you can add email. Um, but it, it, you can't go in and just expect it to go out. There's a couple more steps to it. Um, but this is where you would find the recipients. You wanted to make it a new one. This is a new handler. You go to new handler, type in new handler. Now it's not fresh. I can say I want to go to the workstation, the real computer, right? That's it, we'll go there. I want to go to the pager, 
Okay, we will set that up, and then we want to go to customer email or uh, that folder. We'll get every time I put more email. This is uh, to get you get internet access to email cursor, then you can type in the, uh, the cell phone number, and then the Verizon carrier has it for every way they to get uh, email to you. Text message. So, so we like, like the rise at your phone number, number not to do that. And then, and then we put the we define, define it, it sends on a false. You lose the check chat, but it was false. It's like the wire came out, out so some maybe it didn't happen. happen. And then you can get some new alarms. alarms. You define the, 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 the time, time off, off, and then you get text. What you want to do when it goes into the default. Or a really good unit on and help. And then when it goes back to normal, you can set that there. You guys have any questions about the other one? So, we're in the first time. How much is this? I mean, I know it's part of the definition. How much do you really be diving into some of those components? If it's developing as much as with the Make sure it's not something around it. It's not around the relay. 
Yeah, it's too much to understand. Alright, we'll turn the point. 
So here's what we're talking about. It's like a long shot property. It's 80 to 75. Uh, you, you don't need to change, change this, this name. name. You, you can just do a log description. You can say this is space temp. Low log. You can be a good description if you want. Units. There's so many cool zoning options. Post device. And then the log handler. This is where you want to store them. Um, buffer size, don't touch. Can't even roll up your seconds. Threshold, don't touch. The max samples. ATS is a good prediction. And those all, all reside right here. And they're trying to. This is. They're going to be hard. This is where you get. Adam, you can artifact them if you want. Go to Excel. Um, Jump into the file structure of it. So those all get stored in my computer. This is where the job is made. Uh, sometimes it's a program file, sometimes it's in C uh, drive. Not in the program file. So in this, this case, case, it's in the house. Nowadays, Nowadays, if it's a new version, it will just have a new file. So, so program, program files, files allergen, 2.0, that's the job. Um, ATS Inc. Oh, no, that one was good. There, there. ATS Inc. If it was Mac, 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 so this is the job. job. This, this is everything, everything that makes, makes the job. job. Map, map, maps, UGC, and displays. displays. That's, That's really, really that makes all the job. The job. The map map is just just what what you know what map map is. You want to change, change like, like the, the front 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 I don't know what a bitmap is. So this is if I wanted to edit this, I would have to find a file in here. Um, uh, uh, display is where the display folder is what makes up, you know, you've got the bit map, and you have to display where all the data is laid out, and that's what makes up the display folder. You can't edit those from here. You can only edit this way. Right here. I can move this up. And this is this entity. Then you have the DT folder. You don't want to go in here and just keep going. But if you don't know that this file was actually a device. Because it's if it was the same drive, somebody, somebody didn't upload the right, right code or the same, same version, version. And then you don't, don't know. But these are the list of files. files. And then it's, it's very, very easy, easy to troubleshoot. troubleshoot. So this, this, this is what's, what's in, in the controller. controller. This one had enough, enough. so it's an MCU. So let's move up there. So this code is what's giving me the This is a lot of Microsoft hardware, so they teamed up Al Heller to let them do special blocks and let Al Heller to code and create here. They're actually going away from, from it. Um, this, this is how they do it out with you know, tabs, miscellaneous. Um, this is a garage of DCM. These are the, the points. points. Let's, Let's get a better now. example. I want to open up the bottom. Here's the garage, garage PC. Here's the live DCM that's going on in the, I mean, in the, in the, in the controller. So, so, if we find, find the garage PC, then. 
it's all about the process you're introducing. So, 399201 is this device. So, if I select all these, go all. Video logic, all your functions are under the tab, will never be here. You don't have to use the logic tab, but it's not separate. I selected all of these. Now I want to see what's actually going on. So I view live data, and remember we dropped it from 399201. So 399201, enter. And that's loading all the controller logic, the live data, what's actually going on. Can you define virtual point? It's got the this virtual, But like a outsider reference, would that be virtual? So you got a point that comes in outsider, it's on a wire, and then it comes into the input, and then we would say, okay, analog equals one, we can keep using analog equals one if you want to, or we can say it's coming once, we can say, Analog one, you're going to be AD57 now. Because AI is in AD together. So, is this an analog? And then, and so, so now it's a virtual point. And then I can just send it wherever I want. Or have them any reference to that point. It's always referencing that same input. So, it's just like a virtual place. Virtual place. Or, uh, or inputs and outputs. It may be like you write the code. You can't write to be a zero and you can only use these ones. And then for the ranch points, let's see if there's any of those. What do I do? So that's a branch point. This you can't, can't see. That it's just a bridge point, pretty much. Which point is it? Which point is it? A branch point? Uh, when they leave, you see a power one, one or a power two or a three or four, you can use as many as I want. But <laughs> that's what the video looks like. like um, but the, the, back, back in the day, day that's not what they do. They don't have to use the video. So, so, um, so tools. what's the easiest way if a guy, say they have access to this? Because a lot of times they won't. Like a lot of times guys don't have access to the front end or the credentials, like, like was asked. But if you do, if you're lucky enough to have the credentials, so just manual on and off something. Or like you come up to it. Go to the alarm screen, see what's in alarm, and then and then verify status of a piece of alarm. I don't remember how you guys are screaming that all out, but you can just manually run. So you just drive right with any device. And then you go to the device preference. You'll see it from the VLX and you let that move. That's what's really good. VLX is uh, like, like the user that the extra mod, mod, like the extension mod, mod, mod zero, one, if they set up for boards, they'd still be under the same licenses because they had just attached. 
And that's just on the BLS. Yeah. Um, so that's one way of looking at the DEC. Well, let's go back. Alarms. Um, alarm history, you got a high limit, right? You want to know, you know, you want to cross reference that or at least find a controller. You go on the device manager. You go one more and do five of them. Right there. Now you know you can double click it and say, oh, it's a mechanical room. After you address 22. Sometimes when you're looking at the card, you actually have to look at the back of it and just don't know exactly what it is. Um, so that's how you drop it. Because my friend is like a main tool. So we see that on the alarm. Now Go to the DL. Yeah, the device, man. Yeah. That, and some of the versions, not this one, if you highlight in device manager, the device and hit F12, it will automatically pull up the whole of the device property. So you want to find out where that's coming from, right? We will go with the graphic. This is bad. Got a high tamp. Disabled. That's the first thing I thought of. Uh, why? I don't know. It's called Travis. Travis. I like that one. <laughs> okay, here's one. Uh, 309, 302, BB3. So BB3 is, you got command. And then in the status, those don't, don't match. So we're using yeah. a virtual like, BB3 to send, send the, the, the whole of the alarm. So we would go, we go, go, go cross reference this thing. thing. Is it P2? P2 supply? That must be a supply life. Yeah. 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 Use the bomb. BB3. That's 302. I mean, you can always just like that. that. So, so, what I would add in this case, case, since it doesn't make sense, sense, I would move across. I would see that that's it. Enter to description. Isn't that one? This is a bash in IP. This is in our output. Oh, yeah, I was on the left. 309, 202, 5532. Don't know what P2 is. Uh, I guess it's Andrew. Kind of and oh, the people there. The word finite in building is the question. Yeah, and then and it's a matter of just navigating and grabbing the finding the event. I just, by clicking these points, points across here, I'm trying to find this device. I don't know what P2 is. I guess it's on the Android version. Yeah, it's on the Android version. Yeah, 
Travis says it's in the garage. <laughs> Parking level two. Close that Skype thing. It'll probably stop it from, might stop it from flashing. Oh, what? I just saw that Skype. Oh, you're not, you're not on it. Never mind. Yeah, never mind. It's not, you're not joined. Um, 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so, 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 so when Vizio is not installed, you kind of dead in the water. I went to Vizio. Yeah, that's that. Uh, it's, it's, it's a separate program. Um, yeah, it is by the it doesn't. You buy the and the hour somehow, I guess there's a tool set in Allerton that lets them work together. But it's a and then okay, you're running in trouble with that. Because they're trying to go to the three platform. Now I'll alert JJ. So is it still going to be proprietary? Or is that going to be open? Yeah, it's probably proprietary. Yeah. 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 So the, the, the other way to look at this, this is, is the only way. So, so when you open up Vizio, you always want to go to Tools, EDC, Vizio Logic. But if you don't have Vizio Logic, then you have to do it this way. So, it's a standalone controller you do not run. Unit character controller you do VOC, if this is a building controller global, you will do that, and then you can get lovely screen. It's so much fun. Oh, you got to go to the EDC, 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 if you want to trouble, you'll have to look in here. And then they hit, you know, they tell you what we're doing and where to go. Down here, next one function. The next one function would be that. And if you want to do this, it would actually go down and have to hit you, like I did at F2. And then you wait. And then it shows you the data. And then if you're trouble with this, I highly recommend you to write it. Write the one you go. Yeah, start from the draft. Always start from the draft until they got failed and such. Um, you can you can you can modify it. Uh, another thing about the controllers. This is your controller right here. You can change your controller. You double click the stack. Then you get some functions set up so we can define. You're just scaling on your input. So you have 420 milliamps to uh, zero to five input or thermistor, you can define that right here. And if you do it in global controller, you can get your, if you do it in this version, which is essentially the same thing, just give different ways to do it. You can be on the edit program and create it. That's not the I want to select the device instance and then get it, which brings me back to the control room. EDC, read it from the device. It's pulling the same thing that we looked at the video, but it is just free. And Dr. Davis is the only way to write it all. It takes some time. Now it's loaded, so if you wanted to change the scaling, it would be under the header. Exit is always going to bring you back. Um, header, AI, and this is where you would change that stuff. 
There's a lot of ways to change it over here. Um, all right. You guys got any more questions? Now we can go with what you guys want to know. Yeah. Okay, I just went over it. Was it over your head? Under your head? I have tritiums over my head. So BBs can be ruined with some of those technical ones because if you think, okay, I send it the code, I put the license and send the controller, and you know, it's it's there, but there's a whole world of like Niagara that you got to think about. Um, the global has a subroutine that's going out to fetch that the data from that controller and then tallying it up with most of the buildings. And then they're using that data to determine whether the discharge temperature is going up or down. So always keep that in mind. But if you're going to have a controller, the back off, device scan, device scan, and then you hear here. If it's a used controller, you probably can probably can find the MAC address. address. But if it's a brand, it's a brand new one, everything is 999. The default, and you'll, you'll set the MAC address, address on your card. And then, then we'll scan, scan for it. You'll pop up right, right there, there it's 999. And it'll be red, red. And it will say the MAC address, address that you put in. Then you have, have to get the license. It's a graphic lock. Because if you put a controller and it does and it's 999, the graphic that's saying 3099-2002, the device that used to be that that build isn't there anymore, so the graphic will just go NR or NX. So you need to get that device instance in the new controller. So there's two ways to do it. If you go through here, my favorite way to do it is I go tools, DCC, DLC. The main menu. And then you want to add it. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do like to like, like, but we need to get the same data in it, right? Right. right. Well, you're saying, so square place that. Yeah. Square place that. So, so I'm going, going to find, find a new one. And I got to get my device. I hit that. that. And then, and then it's, it's this, it's this guy right here. Figure your device, device instance. So, VLC so, you can change. So, so you, you know the network number, which is really easy, easy because um, one thing about allergy is not a lot of those. But you need to find the network number for the device. device. So, we know, we know, we'll we'll say, we know we'll say this device belt. The 550 computer scan, and then it's coming up. No, no, no. Yeah, you got to be. Put the new card in, and it's 999999 so, so, so what, what do you mean? Yeah, 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 so you go over here, here, get in here, check the 3000, and then the MAC address, which is 02. And now it doesn't know, you know, we don't know if your license is 999. So if we hit F2, read for the device, then the 3090 is not um, 
So I'm back at F2 and our rubber. This was typically say that back now when you read it into the device. And then you go in here. And then you highlight it. Okay, I don't want one. Well, and you send it back. You can also see over here. You select your device. You do the device scan. So, 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 and then this, this is another way. So, okay, so, okay, we realize this is this part done, it's not communicating. We're going to go to the device scan, scan put the recording, and give it a back access. And we're going to scan for 999. It's not going to pop up with this other one. 999. It shows us right here. You, you select it, and then you hit save table. And then There'll be another, another window. window. I can't, I can't do it right now because it's not put up. There'll be another window. There's another window, window that says, Do you want to change this address? address? And then you say yes. So that, that's another, another window. window. I like this because it's redundant, I think. Um, I thought you were right. Uh, the window. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a little bit. Because you can do it. People you build, build your jobs this way sometimes. Um, um, any other questions about that? Graphic mm -hmm. are pretty simple. They so want to come on a minute. You guys want to slide this up. You guys have a great time on your video or something. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm not so, so, you can so edit. It. We don't really use uh, uh, any of these. these. I've never, I've never seen them used. Uh, so, so edit, edit current display, all you ever really, really used. So this, this is kind of how we can think about it. A little easier than the new. Um, these these put this, this is a push button selector. Like if you want to put something on, on the screen, go to place item. I want a push button selector. Like 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 there it is. I want a read only the property. There it is. Everything you, think you, you double, double click, click on, on and you can tell it what you want to read. read. And then, and then and there's no facets. Um, which which part would you like to You would device template. You can pick the kind you want. You can launch an application. You can have, have a button, button start a web page. page. Uh, you, you can read, read, have, have a button. button. You can maybe that. Uh, uh, Um, they don't have the drawings. So 
actually, because what yeah, happens is everybody yeah. forgets. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they don't know more, guess what? You know, she's going to get the fat on them. And, uh, oh, yeah, well, I remember what this thing was about. Yeah, I don't want to say all of them. No, 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 just control the fact that you don't get the move all the way. Just tell everybody that the media is going to be the first one to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, back up on the track. We're just going to be able to reach each other. Yeah, it's. Oh, yeah, over at So, can you check for alarms if they're not the same way? I don't know. Let's see. That's where I was going. So, tools, advanced, override, you can override scan if you. Override, boy, you can scan. You guys can see that? You can check for it. Tools, advanced, override, boy, you scan. Now, if I hit scan, you got to really be a skyscraper. It's going to scan the whole system, system and it could fall off the system. system. Uh, uh, so so you, if you know what you you're looking, looking for, for you just like it. it. It's a scan. scan. Wait. Wait. It's pretty it's fast. fast. It's pretty good. It is. So that one doesn't have it. Try on it. DCM. That one didn't have it either. I have to write that sometimes. They're actually going to do everything because I'm going to take a sec. I'll take a sec. Any other questions about that? Well. So, I don't know. I mean, this is going to be pretty deep. I've done a little before where it's just kind of grabbing it and it's putting it down. So it's like light like lights on, yes, lights on, on. But if I measure voltage, it's not putting anything out. That's what you want to put in. No. You need to check your priority there on the output. Point that. So, so, for instance, this is disabled. I don't know why they have it, and it's an alarm. So, the status, you know, we're saying run. run. That's the input. Let me find a better example. Look at what she is. Hey. Look at what she is. Look at that. Look up here. Look at this. Look at that. So that's the uh oh here 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 as soon as they have the binary output and then the status is on, right? So if the, 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 the problem is is that the, the graphics says it's on, but your output is. So you need to right click here, anything pertaining to the device. Go to the device properties. Go to the VLC. Go to the input outputs. Get the priority area. And then you'll see, because you're looking at priority 14 on the screen. I'll show you. Is that what we're going to default on the screen? The graphic is. That's all the department. Um, oh, so, 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 um, priority 14 is the DDC in the, in the controller. controller. If it's the global the controller, controller, then this guy is riding, riding to the Android in this controller. So, so it would be in the green one. And then and everywhere else, else you shouldn't see anything else but the manual. <laughs> but, uh, uh yeah, so DDC, yeah, so like, like, like if I change this back to normal, it's active. 
and then you be seeing those at the front. Same with this one. And then, and then you, if you, you overrode it on the front, front end, end, let's see if you can do it. Real properties, yeah, and read it right to it. Sometimes you can do it. You, you, it would override it right there. Schedules, uh, the standard schedules down, down here, here, and then an event schedule. It's pretty similar to the Trium. Um, and how the priority works. But for your instance, it's easy to check the priority and make sure that it, it's not inactive above the active business. If I go to my point, this is zero. zero. Presence value. It's looking at the presence value, which is right here. So I think that's going to be whatever the top one is. Yeah. So whatever the top one is. So if we want to check that, we see that not getting involved the job Where on the end am I going to say, all right, I'm going to make sure that it is getting involved. And I want to make sure that that stand is supposed to be something on. Where on this window am I going to force this along? Right here. Which one? You're pointing to do. Uh, any of the puzzle tree, 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 but essentially any one of them, you can open that. Above the green. Above the green. And it'll take that down. Yeah. If you have a picture of the value, it goes the same way. Like you said, the graphic was, you know, it was, it was green, but you came out there, and, you know, when you mentioned it was off, well, it was off, it was off, it was off, and you mentioned it was off, well, it was supposed to be on, right? Or what if it's a rabbit? I think it's supposed to be on. You know, it's all on the deal with everything. Can you change it at present value? No. So that, that was your next. Present value is like the output. Once you get to the point where you know these are the videos you're saying, if you've got two or three videos that aren't even used, is it something that we can do to switch? To a different video, you have to do it all program. So, I mean, it's the only way I know the way you got to do it. Yeah, you could reassign another video. Yeah, but you got program. Is that something I can do? I need to do it. You can 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 do it. You could probably do it remotely. But you could be the hands on the device. You could move it, tell Mike what, what output you're going to do. <laughs> so yes, you could move it, and then he could do the program side. And you're the hero. Take control of your PC, right? So you can see him. Is that in between controller and see how he did it? Main controller, yeah, the main controller, yeah. 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 the priority array, can you explain that? This right here? Yeah. Yeah, so, 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 on those two bars. Priority 16, 15, 13, 12 are schedules. So, so a schedule point fire on those. And then, then manual operator, priority 8. We, we don't see anything above that. Normal means auto. You said 15 and 16 were sold? Yes. So, but they're below the 14 line. It just depends how you set it up. So, so that's going to be the thing. Yeah. Well, this is for this instance, if you see the schedule, you all of you will see the board of your job. You'll see a point for schedules, schedule point. We'll turn that on, and it will arrive at 16. 
and you won't need to see anything else on it except for schedule. Okay, okay. okay. that's nice. Just go back. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're not. They're, they're, the consistency is. Uh, uh, like Allerton, ATS is a pretty good, good, good job, job about, about drawings and standards. standards. But this, this job has, has put it in 2006, so I don't expect to see any standards. Um, and then a drawing, drawing set. set. Usually, Usually ADS has, has drawing, drawing sets, sets that are, that are just a dive. Once you put the drawing set and the control system in there, you can find what you're looking for. Um, uh, now that you're to this? Yeah, I talked about the two guys. Sometimes you have a page. Well, so the graphics, uh, the graphics, you have to put the standard here to use the point and all of this kind of stuff is used in the code. Um, the only way to see what's going on is looking so at the easy. easy. Um, I uh, to cross reference to see if this was high, high anything, anything else, else. else. you have to do the code. Well, I'm not sure if you'll see another one. What? Yeah, put it on the board. The ring is here. Oh, this guy? Uh, no, that is not the track. If a programmer like put in there, this this fan operates with exhaust fan. Looks like I got a ton of stuff in 
So why? Double click it. And I'm showing you the yeah, on. On. And, and but somebody's somebody it off. Now, now the now thing the about that is So, you want to know what it is. Well, yeah, I, well, I don't even know why, what it is. <laughs> but um, the nice thing about Allerton is you can right click and you can go to user activity. So EMS user. So you went, you right click. Yeah, what, you right can on. right click any point. Oh, got the button there. Yeah, right click any point you want, and I'll You're say, looking at that slot. That yeah. Was the priority slot. Yeah, because if I went to a different priority slot, it'd be different. Okay. So this guy EMS on 9-29-2017, turn this to inactive. So that's, I would ask the customer, it's, I'd bring all this to it, the attention wire these in override, and then go from there. So that's, that's one of them. Let's see what else. These BOs, BOs aren't good, they have an override. You typically don't want to override anything. So oh, this one's override active. I would say that could be relinquished. Why are they not good to override them? Because it's the systems aren't running in auto. Because that's like it's the not whole, automated anymore. It's fat fingered. Put the jumper slack on it. And you'd be surprised how much it's off. It's locked away. If I don't override something, if there's, let's say, a control issue, you need to override it to keep the server room cool. It's fine to leave that overridden until, say, a control guy can look at it. What are you overriding? Yeah, it, well, it depends on your override, too. Um, they can get you into trouble. You can override something that didn't like energize correctly because it's already energized or by something else where the it just doesn't work. You want to so bring like, stuff on set points, over, bring, change You just want to make sure what you're overriding is what you want to stay on how long. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the delay for like Niagara where you can say, ah, three hours, see ya. You know it's going to shut off. When you're when you're maintaining, you want you want to just run the set points up. Do it for the main graphics. Yeah, that's the best way. Yep. Run it all the way up. That's probably the best way to do it. Yeah. And unlike, where is it? The nice thing of uh, they don't have any VAVs. Are you kidding me? So, nice thing about Allerton is they give you an actual occupied set point. You don't have to change the other ones to get it to change. You just change the minimums and maximums, and then you can go between, which is a nice. So you just drive this guy, and he's you know, yeah, you could get go. This unit's an alarm. It doesn't even have an alarm. You can do that too, Tritium. You just have to set it up. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, yes. It's not the Mac Miller standard. <laughs> they, but, you see, ATS makes their own uh, their code, right? They have their own standards. For we use Honeywell standards for the most part, don't we? We use our standards. We have our own standards. Oh, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, and, and it depends on if you pay for it or not. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, well, guys, you got any more questions? Any questions? How, how easy is trending? Super easy. So I'd say you want to trend this guy. Let's see if it's set up. That's not set up, right? So you, right, you just right-click. 
Okay. If you right click a point and you don't see this trend option, it's because the point wasn't set up for it. So you'd go to edit mode <laughs> and you'd have to select trend. Right? Now, okay. it, now I can do it. Okay. So go right click, trend log management, you type in preheat, coil, air temp. And then you go degrees, Fahrenheit, 50,000 samples is a lot, a year maybe. I think 10,000 isn't very much. At every 60 seconds. Run indefinitely. Okay. Well, Tried to refresh the graphic, but it didn't. Uh, where's that? Yeah. yeah. So now it's set up, and it's not going to register until it starts tallying, right? Another thing is the uh, the email setup. So tools. This general system setup tab is how you configure everything. They made this device zero, the server. Uh, the network, this is the, the NIC card in the server, and it's doing BACnet protocol. Um, that's where BACnet protocol is just everything has a device instance and a MAC address, and as long as it's the same baud rate, everything's going to talk. Now, if it's NXJ, the BCMs will have IP addresses, and then the network the MSTP network will be under that IP address. So those are the two different versions of uh, protocols you can have set up. So BACnet IP or just BACnet protocol, which is a, So you'll never see both of these checked, only some instances. This selects the NIC card, um, site configuration. This computer is the Backtalk server. It doesn't even have a host device. They need some maintenance. Um, Typically, that will just be selected. And then time sync sends local time every day. Preferences, never touch it. Startup, shut down. You can do the auto log out or the auto login and pick its start display for whatever user. Email setup is uh, this is how you get the alarms out over the World Wide Web. And you have to have a Gmail server set up. You can set it up for free, uh, gmail.com. Can you stop mail? Can you, yeah, yeah, whatever email server you want. And, and, then, and that's where these alarms have to hit before they get sent out to everybody's email address. So all that stuff's set up here in general system setup. If you change stuff in here and you hit OK, there's a good chance it might not be communicating anymore. Always cancel, always exit out of everything. Uh, system progress monitor, views, you got user request monitor and system progress monitor. System progress just tells you all the trends that are being calculated. Or, uh, Could you show better. us back, back the system up? Yeah, I'll do that too. I mean, that's kind of the first thing you should ever do, regardless, because it, as long as you got a good backup, yeah. it doesn't matter what you do to it, you can always get back to your backup. Yeah. <laughs> True. So back up. You go tools, backup, hit job backup. ATS, there's the job. You could pick where you want it. Desktop, C drive, alert and backup. So here's some other ones. I'll name it the same thing or the job number. You do the date. It doesn't do the date automatically either. No, I said, but you could name it the date. Mm -hmm. Well, the DBS, and that way you know it is today. Yeah, this is the way it's ingrained in my brain. Where do you usually back it up to? Uh, the desktop. desktop. If it's not very big, the desktop. And then you hit backup. Preparing. 
What's the, what's the, what's the number that you're using there? Job number. Oh, the job number? Okay. That's the ATS job number. So it does its thing. <laughs> so Sam, you screwed it up completely. How do I get it to, to back to that? To the backup? Yeah, just mm -hmm. open it up. You got a backup first. Well, yeah. You so you, so your job dies and you need to restore a backup? Yeah, you already you already had a backup, a backup yeah. before I started it. Server crash, you need a new yeah. server. Oh, yeah. you need How do you restore it? Completely screwed it up. Oh, if you do, if you do. You get a, you, there's a restore feature. I did that. I'll do that. Actually, I'm not going to really do it because I don't want to mess with it. You know, you can send it to me and then, well, it's core building. You know, yeah, they need a service tech. They're in a unit in alarm. I'm sure not. Travis. Somebody else. He, he, he says the there's parts on order. That's my answer. He wants to tell you he it'll be easy. How many Allerton buildings have? Uh, uh, Mac Miller got I looked in Keeper. There's like five. I don't, I don't know. I would, uh, for controls, I don't think they do much. Right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. But yeah. Mac Miller's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. When I was working at Virginia Mason, I was always working with Mac Miller, with like Greg Hall and Rick Stanboff. I worked with those guys for like five years. Seems like Seattle, there's a lot of hours. Yeah, they got a pretty good chunk of the market. You'll see them more in the critical, like uh, labs. And then really high end. That's the way it is, I guess. So I don't, I don't miss uh, being in all the critical sites. That's for sure. Mac Miller seems to be more office. Are you talking? Are you talking Honeywell? Or are you just talking? Yeah, Honeywell. Uh, Honeywell seems to be more more office spaces than Allerton with more critical spaces. Are you talking? Are you kind of merging Mac and Honeywell? Uh, Honeywell owns Allerton. Like the product. Oh really? Yeah. I just got tired of the Allerton. It got boring after a while. What's the button? It's pretty easy. That's reset. It does work. And you can hyper terminal to those and uh, configure everything if you can't get to it for a month. So the back, the backup is complete. So then you grab it. Alert the backup. There it is, right there. It's zipped. If you, you can dive into it, but that it's the whole job. These are point, all these D's are the devices. That's point data. Doesn't really have anything in it. Um, where is it? Program files. Any questions on Skype there, sir? Now Doug had a question about those transducers, but he never really followed up with what he was looking for. I'm surprised he didn't ask about the triads. <laughs> I think they're the same. Every other class. Transducer input setup. I don't yeah, know what those scale, are. It's probably scaling is what he's asking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got to go into because the code. Because that's, you know, main, main thing when you do transducer. Yeah. Any All transducer. Right. <laughs> All right, Mike, so I completely screwed that up. How do I restore it? Okay, so luckily Allerton invented a restore feature. So, <laughs> what are you restoring too? Uh, the your backup. You, you backed it up when you first, first, first thing you get there. So, <laughs> you said you, you, you just backed it up and you don't want to screw anything up, but you restore it. Like actually on the flash. So, I'll just show you it here. So, here's the backup, right? It's lit. There's a tool to do it. But so you have your backup, right? So you're gonna go to your backup, you're gonna extract it, you're gonna hit that button. Okay, that looks good. Hit that. It's doing its thing. I'm not saying this is what you're gonna do. This is what you can do. And it could be next. So it even works. Let's keep it. Oh there it goes right there. So it's doing its thing. 
so this folder is the same thing as this folder. Yeah. This is the live database. This is the backup. So if I, oh, I just want to open that so early. It's slowly building. I could literally just copy everything in this folder and dump it in everything in this folder, and it would work. It's, the, it's just the job. It's just like it's just a computer. Like I can take those files, and dump them into the other, into the the active job under ATS Inc. That that would would log duplicate the files. Don't, don't duplicate them. You will have that option. They'll say, "Would you like to replace all these files?" Or or they or they don't exist. If they don't exist, that's different. Um, no, no, it should work as long as you have this. It's all naming conventions. So if you have this, once this is done, if I change this to, you know, I take it, now it's the same name, right? I could just drop it over here. And it would, Allerton knows to look at that path because that's what we set up when we built the job. The other way is you go program files, Allerton, vision. Backtalk restore utility. Oh, you can't. I gotta shut it down. So you gotta shut this guy down. Please, you gotta back up. You go restore utility. Oh, wait, it's still thinking. Oh. Sorry, Travis. Oh, I'm sure he'll. Chime in on that. It's still, it's still, still shutting down. I'm surprised the journeyman for that site isn't on the, the sky. Mm -hmm. Charles is on there. He's saying down. Yeah, it's too loud. Yeah. So go backtalk restore utility. It's under the Allerton program files. Allerton vision. Backtalk restore. And then. You find your backup and put it somewhere. We put it right there. It has to be a zip file. Once it's done and it says and it gives you a path. If it's not if if it doesn't let if this button's not highlighted or like if it's grayed out, it won't let you restore it. So then it has you, to be that zip file. It can't be the unzip. It has to be the zip file. So this program unzips it and throws it in? Yep. It does the same thing I just did manually. Um, hit that button and then it just it looks like a reverse backup. Uh, sometimes when the Envision icon, you click it, it doesn't work. You, you need to sometimes run it as administrator. It doesn't look like there's an option for that. But, um, yeah, this is old. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, we can dive into the questions. When you back up, it, 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 uh, it won't clear any overrides or anything like that. Right? No, it's yeah, it's just all what's that. on the computer. Yeah. Yeah, all the graphics, the bitmaps, the trend. Well, the trends, trends, schedules, and alarms reside in the global controller, that videotape looking thing, and then graphics, displays, and. Um, yeah, graphics and displays all reside on the server, which is it, is there somewhere to, you know, is there a utility or something like that that you you can you can compare the database with the uh, you know the uh, controller you know <coughs> included in the controller itself? <coughs> like, it's a is there like a verify function? Uh, yes, it's a Visio function. Remember how to, it's only in Visio though. So, not it, Visio so you have to have Visio. And it's yeah. Microsoft product. So you, it's not like Tritium where everything is in one screen. Yeah. Uh, but you'd, you'd I find. I don't use Visio, so I don't really know. You'd have to open up. You'd, you'd open up the file on the device. You'd open up the file on the laptop. And then there's a compare function somewhere in here. Oh, really? Um, so it's not props. like you can't do. Like all the VABs on floor one or floor no. one through thirteen, or it's, it's, you have to physically go to each. Yeah, and then device. there's. I mean, 
And then there's for Vizio, there's DDC bar, which some guy made a, an add-on that is called DDC bar, and it has special functions and stuff just for Allerton and troubleshooting. So you don't really know if, you know, somebody it happens all the time. Brought their, brought their laptop that doesn't have the current file on the database and... Yep, happens all the time. Um, yeah, no, unfortunately. They are two different products, though. Um, global controllers, we didn't get into those yet. These are pretty cool. BCM Ethernet. This, so there's a BCM MSTP. The one that was passed around is the Ethernet. The Ethernet means there's an Ethernet plugged into it. So that's the primary source of communication to the server. Um, it usually goes to a switch and then from the switch to the server. Uh, the ETH, if you click the global controller, um, it has some pretty good diagnostics. You can hit DDC, it's running. There's many times that you know, you'll find it halted or failed. You can turn off the DDC and restart it from here. Um, kind of gives you some information about it. The rock file, this is a real-time operating code. I would say this is the same thing as um, when you commission, when you commission, I guess. What's the real-time operating code? And there's, the, there's the file and then there's, yeah, you commission the device. It's like re-sending the real-time operating code, I think, kind of, maybe. Um, so this tells you if it's running. And then the AV diagnostics are pretty good. You can have up to like 300 trends. Um, those are event enrollments or the alarms, how many alarms it's storing. It tells you how much free megabytes there are. Uh, if you hit more, the device senses tells you how many devices are on the trunk. So there's 23 devices on this garage BCM. And that's about it for that. Reboot count. I mean, it was a PM to come through and just zero this stuff out. Uh, all the Allerton controllers will work with the Jace. They do work with the Jace? Yeah. Backnet. You got a backnet driver? Mm. It's 100% customizable. In the newer versions, uh, there's some cool tools for you know, aligning graphics and stuff with 2.0 there isn't. Um, you have jobs with uh, Jason's running uh, Allerton cards? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen them yet, but I've heard Adam talking about it. So other than that, I mean, any more questions? Devices? Those are all the Unknown. On uh, on those uh, little cards, little tux card, a little field controller. It's got a little uh, like a resistor between the hot and the common. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a little. Uh, oh, just on the. Yeah, just yeah, on that guy right there. there. Common and like. Oh, this one. Yeah. That's because there's uh, probably a 4 to 20 milliamp input. I've seen them before where they're on the on the inlet of the power. Yeah. Where it's like almost like a buffer or something. It's a, it goes between common and 24. And then I've He's seen those burn out. Oh, uh, yeah. You probably saw those in the Ibex. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, ATS went around and they, they because cards were blowing up on power outages, so they put those in. Okay. And then those things, I don't know if you ever see them, they, they go between the hot and They're the like common. They're like big, too, right? On the inlet, on the power inlet of those cards. Well, those little things, I've seen them short out before, and then they take out the transformer. Upstream. So Let's go to so this. Uh, it's not just on the other time, they, they use them on just about everything. Yeah. In fact, they have typically, you know, a lot of times if you have, uh, uh, if you're using Triax, you know, they'll want, you know, to you to put put those on, you know, all your inductive uh, coils in your, you know, and you're, and you're powering up from like a rooftop unit or from a, from a unit. All your inductive load, all your inductive loads, like your relays and stuff, will have them across the coils. And uh, it's just a little snubber is all it is. Yeah, man. 
Is it preventing voltage spikes or imbalance or something? Is that what it's doing? Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, uh, the spikes from, you know, so, so basically when, the, you know, when you, you know, open the, the, the coil, you have counter EMF go back and it creates a, you know, a spike. It kind of protects And so the it's, you know, it's, it's trying to prevent those spikes. Yeah. Uh, you remember, you know, when we had uh, Richard Zeta and they had the DIO uh, 88 cards, and if we took power from the rooftop unit and they, if we didn't have those, uh, those on there, you would have the, the ghost outputs firing, you know, they, you know, you, you know, you'd hear, you know, you know, fans popping on or compressors popping on and off. Well, that was why, because they didn't have those, they didn't have those, uh, you know, quench arcs on the, on the coils, you know, as soon as you put all those on there, that problem went away. So calm troubleshooting, um, there's the Ibex calm, and then there's, Let's see if we can get a good picture of an apex. Because I know there's probably still some of it. Let's find a big picture here. See that pretty good? Okay, you see those spades right there? Those little pins pointing up? Okay, those are, um, you take one of your leads, doesn't matter what side, that's trunk one, that's trunk two, that's trunk three, that's trunk four. And then you have, you know, common, you know, power and comp or positive and negative, positive and negative, positive and negative, positive and negative for each of one of these. So if you take your meter and you put put it on DC volts and you take one lead and put it on this pin and then you take the other lead and you put it on the positive or I'm sorry, the negative of trunk one, there's also these little green lights that rep they'll, they'll blink when they're working. Um, you should be able to see your, your trunk voltage. You should, good trunk voltage is eight volts. But you can twist this pod when you're troubleshooting to turn the voltage up and down. Um, so when you're out in the field troubleshooting, you can find find what you're looking for. With Ibex, they star. You can star, so you can run calm, and then you can splice and go five different directions. So, yeah, it's even not, even with you know when you can, it typically shortens your network down significantly. Even when you can, don't do it. Yeah, another thing that happens a lot are these, these these get locked up. Well, not a lot from time to time. They get locked up. If you if you come over to the device, you switch all the dip switches to off. You flip the tenth one on, and power cycle it, and it will do a ram kill on the apex. And then it's you know fix the problem quite a bit because they'll get lo locked up. Um, Say that one more time. If you if you turn all these dip switches to off, okay. and then you flip the tenth one on, and then you remove this Buchanan, and you know reapply power, it'll do like a bar. You'll see these lights barber pull, like, and it's doing a ram kill, and that if your apex is locked up, that will clear that. That's just on that apex card, or is that just on apex. Okay. Yeah. The batteries need to be replaced. They, they, I've seen them explode. These little rams can be ten thousand dollar batteries. No, they're like nine bucks. <laughs> yeah, the board's ten. Well, what it used to be ten grand. Didn't you say earlier that Pelican was just gonna say, "Oh, your board's bad. You need to replace the board." Well, well, no. The thing is, if if they find a bad apex, then they um, will give them a loaner. If they say, but they got to sign a contract to upgrade their system. What kind of battery is that? Uh, just a, a, a lithium. And you can get like it. Three volts on the CR one. Yeah, you're probably right. I think so. You can get it at a, any battery plus store. Just, just to keep the just to keep the application I think it's a on, on board. I think it's like a graceful shutdown thing. I think. Now replacing the battery, do you lose any saved info in that card there, or 
Just swap it out. You don't even have to power cycle it. Okay. So you want to leave so it powered up, though, right? Well, yeah, I was going to say, you want to leave it powered up, though, when you change the battery, right? That's how I've always done it. Right, because but if you, cause if you take the power off and pull the battery, oh, then you're going to have to reload that card again. Typically, that's the way it happens. Yeah. I don't know about I, Allerton, but they were all very no other controllers, that the, that is the case. The products are pretty redundant. I mean, they're, they're pretty reliable products. A carrier, you did that to carrier? <laughs> you might have to go buy a new card. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, and then for... The back net um, is two volt drum, so a positive and negative you should get zero to two volts DC and it fluctuates. All even on the apex it will fluctuate from it'll be like zero eight volts, zero eight volts, zero eight volts. Um, and on the back net it'll be two on the negative, two on the positive, and it has to be daisy chained and you can't splice and it works really good if you have one twenty ohm resistors. And I think you could have up to 300 cards on a trunk. Uh, the best way to troubleshoot back net is breaking it. Or I guess with any any of the comm is break not breaking it, but like splitting the comm. And don't split it in like three different places. Split it once and then go check. And then go split it again and then go check. And light and conquer. Yeah. If you split it in half, you only have to do it seven times before you're done with one card. <laughs> yep. Doesn't matter how big it is. And I've seen a, seen the wire uh, zip tied to all thread a ton of times where it's like the needle in a haystack and it's just zip tied to all thread. It's been there for 20 years and it finally said, okay, we're going to short out today. Um, yeah, what else is there? There's repeaters for back talk that will boost the signal to go further. You'll see modems for phone lines, but they're kind of go, going out of style. Yeah, other than that, I mean, I pretty much went over everything, I think, whether it made sense or not. Yeah, what time? I think that's it. Travis asked if you could uh, confirm that one station was back up before uh, disconnecting. There's something that... What station? I don't know. He's, uh, I'm not sure which I mean. <laughs> Some shit was down there. Uh, might have been... That's a Niagara talk. Just, just the site. He just said the site. Oh, he's typing. Hang on. Oh, it's running. I pulled it back up. Okay. They need to upgrade. Question here. Doug started to. Hey, Dougie, you can ask your question. He's Hold on. on. Yeah, he's on there. He fell asleep. He's out. Where's the guitar, Doug? Unless there's uh, anyone. How many questions? controls text we got? Mac Miller? Yeah. Mark would probably know better than you. Four? Oh, service? Yeah. Four? <laughs> Four. <laughs> yeah. Who all's that then? What was that? Who all's that then? Uh, me, Steven, uh, Steven Zellner, uh, Pernil. Pernil, oh yeah. And then Rob. Person. Hello? And who? Rob Estes. Yeah. And Steven uh, Zellner. Zellerton is just Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> the tritium is a better product. All they know is the X. Kimble. Kimble. K I M B A L. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Oh, yeah. They don't McDonald's Miller if they just can't hand you or put them in. I want to test. Steph, can you hear me? What's up, did you have to repeat? What zone are you getting? Oh, yeah. Well, 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 yeah. Well